dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs anatoma it's a series of e learning lectures on gross anatomy the topic for today's discussion is larynx 3 where we will cover the interior of the larynx i have called this series as lockdown lectures or study at home lectures because at present we are all teaching from home the institution is closed i mean classes are suspended because of this corona virus pandemic we are trying at least to cover the theory part through these online lectures and i'm posting these in youtube hopefully in a very short while from now we must we may be in a position to come back to the um institution for practicals we await government orders regarding the same at that time these pre dissection videos may have been of some help to you that's the idea i am dr balasubramanyam i am a professor in the department of anatomy working at st john's medical college bangalore in india let's uh, just quickly have a look at a few mcqs image based mcqs then we will discuss the topic and at the end we will uh, rediscuss the mcqs and identify the correct answers now you see first mcq there is a flashing arrow the model is the posterior view of the larynx identify the pointed structure flashing arrow there are four options look at it carefully and then give your answer mcq number 2 again there is an arrow mark red flashing arrow it's pointing to something what is that item there are four choices here also mcq number 3 we are moving to a dissected specimen here you will have to once again one more item has been pointed out you will have to identify what that particular item is or structure is mcq number 4 yet another item in the same specimen it's been flashed the arrow mark identify that arrow pointing structure last one this is a endoscopic view of the inlet to the larynx and into the larynx also to some extent certain structures are seen now there is a flashing arrow there identify that particular structure i repeat answers at the end of the video let's go to the discussion larynx interior interior of the larynx i have called it as interior decoration now you see this is a very interesting photograph the angle in which i have shot the first impression is it looks like as if it's some kind of a human being like this i mean it's just incidental but note very carefully you can from the previous video we have we can now identify the hyoid bone the ivory color structure the leaf like epiglottis then the large shield like thyroid uh, cartilage the cricoid lamina and the arachnoid cartilage are not labeled but this is the essence of previous video i repeat hyoid bone epiglottis thyroid cartilage a cricoid plate and the arachnoid cartilage these are the things clearly visible in this uh, specimen see now let's see epiglottis inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage arachnoid cartilage i repeat arachnoid cartilage next the lower part of the epiglottis is called the epiglottis tubercle further down it is attached to the thyroid there is a, a, a joint formation there 
that's the lamina of the cricoid cartilage you can see the arrow is right on the posterior median ridge and that's the arytenoid cartilage next inlet to the larynx or the floor of the laryngopharynx you can easily identify the lung of the sorry the epiglottis the large tongue is above it next posteriorly the arytenoid cartilage connecting the epiglottis and the arytenoid cartilage is the mucosal fold the airy epiglottic fold and deep to it there is a muscle of the same name airy epiglotticus next in the previous one i identified the epiglottis now we are identifying the tongue in front of it and between the tongue and the epiglottis is the vallecula on either sides of the mucosal fold in the midline called the um, median glosso or epiglottic fold now again recap that's the pyriform fossa next slide here this is an actually a, a, a dissected specimen it's a mid sagittal section the part pointed out is a dorsum of the tongue that's the pyriform fossa the epiglottis is in front you can see and the vallecula is between the epiglottis and the uh, dorsum of the tongue the posterior most part of the dorsum of the tongue lower down is the arytenoid cartilages i repeat lower down is the arytenoid cartilage we'll re review again dorsum of the tongue higher topmost label then the vallecula then the piriform fossa and finally last item is the arytenoid cartilages recap once again the piriform fossa note its lateral relation to the airy epiglottic fold it is immediately lateral to the airy epiglottic fold and then in front of the epigl epiglottis and connecting it to the dorsum of the tongue is the median glosso epiglottic fold next you can see the cricoid lamina much much lower down in this photograph now we will examine the interior of the larynx in two areas the su a supra uh, glottic area and an infraglottic area roughly the vocal cord will be the plane of division now you see that's the supraglottic area and that's the infraglottic area it's shown in two different specimens to avoid confusion now the, the the vestibular fold and the vocal fold are very prominent the line of demarcation is on the vestibular fold the space limited by the vestibular fold is the rima glottidis similarly there is a fold of mucosa above called the vestibular fold it's it's not a true fold it's a false vocal fold and the space that is enclosed is the rima vestibuli the entire area above the rima vestibule is called the vestibule it goes as far up as the airy epiglottic fold that is the upper limit of this vestibule I, that's why i written epiglottis and the airy epiglottic fold that's again one more labeling epiglottis arytenoid cartilage and connecting the two is the airy epiglottic fold next from this model we move on to the actual specimen the dotted arrow or dotted line is on the ventricle of the uh, larynx the area above it is a supraglottic area and the area below is the infraglottic area actually this dotted line should be on the vocal cord or mm below this location shown you see now that's the supraglottic area both sides 
it's wrapped by the mucous membrane, supraglottic mucous membrane. Next, we will have to align ourselves with this knowledge on the actual specimen, supraglottic area. See, that is the supraglottic area covered with mucous membrane. Supraglottic area covered with mucous membrane. Now, I have removed the mucous membrane. You can see it's been pulled and a pin has been anchored there. And deep to the mucous membrane, the arrow, there is a yellow arrow there. Now, that yellow arrow is, is a very important structure. It is deep to the mucous membrane of this area. That part is called as the um, quadrangular membrane. I repeat, that part is called the quadrangular membrane. Let's recap. Epiglottis, aretinoid cartilage and the aryepiglottic fold. Next, a little more points. There is a vestibular fold above and there is a vocal fold below that's a slit like cavity that that cavity is the larynx <coughs> that that uh, slit is called the ventricle of the larynx now we move on to the infraglottic area now you see let me highlight the mucosa of the infraglottic area one and that's the second i repeat mucosa of the infraglottic area subglottic mucosa now you can see in the same specimen that area is the infraglottic area of one side now when i roll up the mucosa up to the vocal membrane i repeat the subglottic mucosa has been removed from its in that deeper structure and it has been rolled up to keep it at the level of the vocal folds you have notice that the area is the uh, conus elasticus. I repeat, that's the conus elasticus, also known as cricovocal membrane. Similarly, on the other side, we have gone a little more deeper. The mucous membrane has been uh, removed as a flap and thrown on the side. The conus elasticus is visible, but now in this specimen you can notice that the conus elasticus is also being displaced and flashing arrow that yellow black arrow is actually showing to you a muscle exactly below the vocal, vocal fold and therefore this muscle is the vocalis muscle now let's recap with a mild sagittal sorry with a mid sagittal section now this is from the museum very clearly there is a central ridge connecting the dorsum of the tongue and the epiglottis that's the uh, glosso epiglottic uh, fold median glosso epiglottic fold and the cavity on either sides is the vallicula you can see the door the tongue has been labeled the epiglottis has been labeled and in between the two the fold of mucosa is the um, glosso epiglottic fold also seen in this cross section mid sagittal section are the vestibular fold and the vocal fold and there is a yellow star that star location shows the ventricle of the larynx you can also see more posteriorly the arytenoid cartilage let's take a look at the uh, images as viewed in uh, through a uh, fiber optic endoscope it's in the living so therefore the rich bloodness the blood red richness is very obvious the epiglottis is clearly identified as the first point in this discussion next that's the vocal fold pearly white border uh, uh, above the conus elasticus next above is another fold not as sharp as the vocal, but this is called the vestibular fold. And posteriorly, the arytenoid cartilages. Now, again, we'll retain the tongue. 
the gap between the vestibule and the vocal fold is the ventricle. <coughs> the ventricle leads into a saccule which moves up uh, into the side of the larynx. Now that's the airy epiglottic fold and that's the pyriform fossa uh, on the outer side of the airy epiglottic fold. Again recap, tongue and the glossoepiglottic fold. Next, that's the vellicula on either sides. Next, remember the tracheal rings are seen from the top if it is very well is very well lit as in this case those are the tracheal rings the vocal cord is partially open next more laterally is the piriform fossa i repeat more laterally is the piriform fossa there is a cuneiform cartilage and a cornicular cartilage close to the upper part of the uh, arytenoid cartilage I repeat, those are the corniculate and the cuneiform cartilages. Next, there is a small wedge of mucosa. In between the two arytenoids, it's called inter-arytenoid mucosal fold. Now, it's time we had a second look at the MCQs. The first one, MCQ number one, that was the pyriform process. Remember, is immediately lateral to the airy epiglottic fold of mucosa and more lateral to it is the posterior border of the thyroid uh, cartilage and the thyroid membrane. Item number two, MCQ number two, that gap is, is the gap between the vocal and the vestibular fold and that's the ventricle. MCQ number three, the pointed structure is the quadrangular membrane. Remember, we are our location is we are above the uh, vestibular fold. We are above the ventricle. A fla small flap of the mucous membrane has been reflected, and the red arrow is pointing to the quadrangular membrane deep to it. MCQ number four, the other half of the same cut larynx, sagittally cut larynx is taken. We have identified an area of mucosa immediately below the uh, vocal cord, reflected the mucosa. Then we have also reflected the uh, conus elasticus immediately um, deep to it. And some muscle is visible uh, deep to it. That muscle is what has been asked and that's the vocalis muscle. Remember, it is immediately below the vocal cord. Lastly, that is MCQ number 5. This is a direct photography uh, from the, roughly from the uh, nasopharynx or something in that area. The pearly white structure with a sharp edge is the vocal cord. That's the vocal cord. You can see other structures like vestibular fold, vocal fold, the lamina of the cricoid, the intraretinoideus, all that is there. But then very specifically pointing out here by the arrow is the vocal fold. Now that was an overview of the interior details of the larynx. Friends, I am sure you may have a few points to clarify or you may would like to give me a feedback feel free my dear students to send me a note on to this email or better still type out your views on the blog page immediately below the YouTube that will be um, helpful in improving this video thank you therefore for your patient hearing. I hope this has benefited you during this lockdown period. Thank you.